Good evening. This is Maestro Cotello with a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today we have a 2v2 on Desert Showdown. Our first player today is Adilla playing as Sindri, Trollface, Chaos Sorcerer. He is a spell casting hero who can shoot at long range with Doom Bolts. He's got a lot of other shenanigans, like he can teleport things with Sigil of the Rift, make uh, certain squads explode with the icon of Zinch. Very. Very interesting and awesome hero. Adila's teammate is Field Marshal, Marshal Yarick, playing as the Commissar Lord. This Death Corps of Krieg Commissar Lord, we know that because he does have the gas mask. The Commissar Lord is a slightly tanky melee hero, also a hybrid uh, support hero. Because he can definitely buff his uh, units a bit by shooting them in the head. On the other side of things, we have Fat E playing as the war boss. This tanky big orc now has a bionic eye, a big truck-like thing on his back. Very, very powerful hero, huge and stompy. Um, the, those heretics do not want to mess with them, and they retreat right out of there. Finally, on the other side, we have Indrid of Dawn of War replays Net playing as the Hive Tyrant. Yet another tanky melee hero. He cannot be knocked down or suppressed. He has some powerful melee weapons as well as melee counter abilities. So Tyranids, looks like Tyranids versus Imperial Guard in this lane. Uh, at this point, the Tyranids are definitely going to be outshot by the Imperial Guard with that Sentinel as well as the Guardsmen. And they're only just now getting their Toxin Sacks. We have Toxin Sacks on one of the Termagants, but I think not yet on the other one. Yep, not yet. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, without the Toxin Sacks, the Termagant damage is actually pretty pitiful. It's something like they have s roughly Scout DPS without the Toxin Sacks, and then roughly Tack DPS with the Toxin Sacks. Commissar L Lord needs to be a little careful there. Normally going in, um, if he had full health and his energy shield, would not be a bad idea for him to fight the Hormagons since he would be bleeding a lot of those models. Um, but with only about 40% health, that was a little too big of a risk of losing the Commissar Lord, and he did have to retreat out of there. Now, Adila is suffering a bit because he went for he went for a only a two heretic opening going straight into a havoc. Uh, there there are definitely a lot of good reasons for doing this. It is something that can be extremely extremely powerful. It's something that I first learned from Chaos Librarian, and I've used it myself. Um, it can be very powerful, especially in team games where you don't need as much mobility as you need in one v one. Um, but even in team games, it does mean that at the start of the game, you are going to get pushed back a little bit since all you have on the field is two heretics and uh, the sorcerer. So not much you can do about the war boss in that case. In fact, you have almost no ability to deal with heroes in general, especially melee heroes. But it does give you a lot of control. Um, right here, if Adila turns these heretics around and goes for those slugger boys, he might actually be able to get a wipe on those Slugger Boys. It might be just a little bit too late, but he just might make it in there. I th oh, but we had a bit of a save um, from those shooter from those shooter boys using um, aiming. What's that? So a close call. I think maybe some earlier re reactions from Adila could have taken out that Slugger Boy squad. On the other side, we already have a Warrior Broods a warrior brood squad out for Indrid, and it looks like he was starting a second, but then he canceled it. Uh, and now he's just going, getting that Barb Strangler. I thought he was going to get two warrior broods so that he could have one with a Barb Strangler and one that could eventually be upgraded to have um, Adrenal Glands, but it looks like he's just going to go with this single Barb Strangler warrior brood. Uh, particularly good against the Imperial Guard, and in my experience, it seems to be turning out to be pretty good in general. I think it was generally just not considered very good in retail because getting the Barb Strangler um, locked you out of getting the Adrenal Glands. And the Adrenal Glands do scale a bit better, um, and they, have ha of course, have synergy with um, some very powerful melee units. But that, that Barb Strangler is very good too, and particularly against Imperial Guard who are very, very vulnerable to it, um, since it does both suppression as well as some nice area of effect damage. On the other side of things, and Adila goes for, I, I actually, I would call this the Chaos Librarian build, uh, the double heretic into double havocs. It's something I first saw from him. Um, and he's certainly the person who does it most commonly in team games. It's it's a little tricky to use because um, you get relatively little, you get very low range DPS. Um, 
And you're actually, your main source of damage is literally the Sorcerer. You're going for control with the Havocs, and then you're using the Sorcerer's Doom Bolts in combination with the Suppression uh, to do a lot of damage. Um, one of the other disadvantages of that Double Heretic, Double Havoc build um, is that you're basically putting a lot, you're basically putting everything into glass cannon units that can actually be very, can be killed and wiped very easily. Uh, and even when you see Chaos Librarian do this build, it's it's also not uncommon to see him lose both the Heretics and the Havocs throughout the course of the game. Still definitely has a big potential payoff, but we have a Hive Tyrant here who has already been upgraded to the Extended Carapace and is also getting the Rending Talons. Uh, that Extended Carapace is great for countering setup teams, um, since the Hive Tyrant can just charge on right through. It can actually be very, very difficult to deal with, because you have this big tanky melee hero who can't, you can't really fight him with a melee unit, so you really need ranged units to focus him down. Um, and then it, he actually just really nullifies setup teams, which are otherwise usually counters to tanky melee heroes, even ones that uh, cannot be suppressed because of how it limits the space in which they can move around and because, it usu and because usually the damage of a suppression team gets bigger, or I mean gets the damage of a suppression team gets higher on um, the closer you are to that suppression team that normally you can't really just charge in with a tanky melee hero. Um, but the Hive Tyrant with that extended carapace actually does counter setup teams. Um, but it looks like Field Marshal Yark is handling it well. Definitely came out on the better end of that engagement. Bleeding injured quite a bit as well as taking out the Hive Tyrant. <coughs> Excuse me. Fat E going with a rather lean build. And I think this is something you can more commonly do. Go for, say, um, a three-squad tier one as opposed to a four-squad tier one. I think it's easier to do that with tanky melee heroes since they really do give you a lot early on. But I like the use, uh, the way Adila is handling some of this. Uh, using the suppression as a way of getting those heretics into the shooter boys to force them off the field. This Havoc will need to go, though. The War Boss is around the Firing Arc. If Adila does not react, he is going to lose this Havoc Squad, and I think he will lose this Havoc Squad. Yep, and there it goes. So that is just one of the challenging things about that build, especially with Adila choosing to keep these Havocs on the field with only two out of three models. Now, of course, a Havoc is a unit where most of the function... or, yeah, the... The majority of the functionality and, and basically just usefulness of the Havoc Squad really just comes out of that lead model, that the, basically the Heavy Bolter model. Um, so in a way, you technically don't need those other models, and it's not entirely uncommon for better players to actually not reinforce them to save reinforcement costs. Um, that being said, what you are sacrificing is durability on a squad that is already kind of pretty fragile. Um, Havocs and suppression teams in general are pretty fragile. Um, believe it or not, I, if anything, I would say the heavy armor setup teams are actually some of the most fragile setup teams there are since um, they're especially vulnerable to power melee units. And Indrid extending his Hive Tyrant a little bit more again. Looks like he is going to get him out alive this time. Uh, so again, we just saw that Havoc die. So I usually still like to reinforce my Havocs entirely to three models, again, just because even with all three models, they're a fragile squad. Um, especially when you have a lot of high DPS melee units. Um, so particularly against, against a race like Orcs or against a race like Eldar, which have very, very powerful me melee units, even against Chaos, again, with these Heretics, um, it can be very, very risky to leave a Havoc uh, on the field, or any suppression team that matter, um, without full models. Because even at full models, a Havoc, a Devastator, even the other setup teams, um, from a single flank, they can get wiped by a squad like Howling Banshees, or even like Slugger Boys. Uh, especially Slugger Boys, once they have their Nod Leader, in fact. But one of the other advantages of that build that Adila is getting, that, as I call it, the Chaos Librarian build, is that it is a very cheap, inexpensive build. Um, so even though he lost his Havoc, he's going to Tier 2, and he's going to be the first one to have a Tier 2 unit out on the field, and quite an expensive Tier 2 unit in the form of that Chaos Dreadnought. There we go! We got a Manticore Strike nearly wiping that Hormagon Brood in, a, in uh, that volley. Uh, and that is part of the power of the Manticore. Um, 
basically if you don't react or if you don't retreat, you really can risk losing an entire squad that way. Especially a lot of these squishier squads. Uh, guardsmen, um, termagants, hormigants. Especially uh, shooter boy squads. Not so much shooter boy squads once they have their knob leader. Um, but once they don't, well, when they don't have it, they, they are extremely vulnerable to being wiped. Um, so Adila gets this Chaos Dreadnought out at a time when it is relatively uncountered. Uh, and we see Fat E actually going for a Ludoboy squad as one of his chosen counters. He's definitely going to be getting that in response to um, this Chaos Dreadnought. Now if we look on this side, it looks like... Yark is still being very threatening with that Manticore, forcing retreats, and that Manticore, again, you either threaten squad wipes, or you threaten squad wipes, you threaten a bleed because of mono losses, or you just threaten full retreats. Um, well, you don't threaten full retreats, you cause full retreats because of what you threaten. Uh, and that's, that's extremely, extremely pot potent. Uh, and the Manticore, it really is just a, a really, really good unit. Um, particularly in teams, uh, Imperial Guard players do generally say that uh, Manticore usually isn't built in 1v1, uh, and I'm certainly not denying that, and there are certainly reasons for it. But it really does do a lot, especially in teams. Um, I'd say the biggest disadvantage of a Manticore in 1v1 is that it really is a fragile unit, So, and it's, a, it, it's an extremely expensive unit for how fragile it is and for how easily killed it is. Um, but it's a lot harder to kill it in team games uh, where it's just behind, just so far behind enemy lines um, and just the more naturally congested nature of team games. Now, Yark is doing okay. He's preserved his squads. Um, he did lose his Commissar once, but he's preserved his squads a bit. He is getting doubled now because... Um, because Fat E is coming over here, and Fat E is going to be very, very threatening against Yark with double shooter boys, both of which are fully upgraded and have levels. So it's going to be very important for uh, Yark, I think, to use those flares that he's using, um, because it's it's just a very, very, very hard for Imperial Guard to uh, deal with all these shooter boys. Period, pretty much, unless they have something like. Maybe like a Camaro, which is obviously not affected by the Shooter Boys. We have the Commissar Lord right here. Has some more gear. Now has the Xenos Power Claw. That's a, a new, just a, a model change in the Elite Mod. It functions exactly as the Tier 2 Power Fist. It basically is the Tier 2 Power Fist, except now it's a Power Claw model. It just makes things different. Uh, and it's done because of, kind of in honor of the character Commissar Yark, <laughs> um, who had his arm cut off by an orc with a power claw and then he killed that orc and then actually stole his power claw and then he actually used that in future battles so the chaos dreadnought right here i think gonna be taking more shots no I, oh probably not so yark is still getting hit by two i think And wh while he's doing that, um, Adil is taking advantage of that time to not only... <laughs> he's actually trying to capture um, Fat E's generator farm. And it looks like Fat E already lost the unit. I didn't catch it, but he lost a, s a squad of stick bombers. Here we go with a Dark Flames. That is a Dark Flames that I don't personally approve of very much. Um, and that's, that's kind of my opinion. But actually, this is what he's going for. Actually, Zoe knows what he's doing right now. Um, no, well, he had the right idea, but um, a little, a little too late. That's kind of that's actually my signature. <laughs> um, but there he used. He does have the icon of Zinch, a very, very powerful, powerful war gear. Um, it is. It has a very specific. It, it's only useful against very specific squads. But for the squads that it's very useful against, it is a little too powerful, to be honest. And I actually had have a few recent games where um, I, I did so much with that icon of Zinch. It's a little bit too good, particularly against um, Guardsman squads, uh, against any Imperial Guard squad, in fact. It's still very good against um, Orc squads, and it can be good against Tyranid squads that are not under Synapse. Um, but Adila right there, he, he kind of didn't quite get his combination right. He did he did the Dark Flames first, and then did um, and then he did uh, Curse of Zinch. He needs to do Curse of Zinch first, and then Dark Flames. So we have an auto cannon heavy weapon team. It's inside this building. Uh, it's taking damage from something. I'm not even sure what, but it's going to be in a lot of trouble on its way out. 
But these Hormigons are actually derping a bit. They still can actually turn around and go for that heavy weapon team, but they don't. I feel like that could have been a dead heavy weapon team. Uh, and ultimately, I think that was just a missed opportunity um, from Injured right there. Oh, what, what do we have here? I kind of love when that happens. But Adil is now being very, very aggressive with his build. So Fat E still... Fat E actually getting pushed back a bit by Adila. Now Fat E could definitely switch out to the Power Claw as a way of helping to deal with that Chaos Dreadnought. He only has a single source of AV, which are these Luda Boys. I hear the sounds of, I feel like, something getting hit by Manticore Strikes, and I apparently missed a ton of things getting hit by Manticore Strikes. And Indrid's still keeping all this stuff out on the field. Maybe he'll drop, like, a, a Brood Nest right here. And wow, he's already in Tier 3. Has the Carnifex out. Didn't even realize. But he he does have the red for a Brood Nest. He could do that right here to keep up the pressure. Uh, and that could be very, very difficult for uh, Yark to deal with. Especially if Indrid puts either... puts Well, he could put something on this Carnifex. He's putting Thorn back. He could actually go right into the base and go after that Manticore. And it could be tough because it looks like uh, Yark will move around a bit. He is moving around his Manticore, and Indrid, obviously, he doesn't really know where that Manticore is, and it looks like right now he's actually not going to risk um, overextending that Karn effect, even though at the moment there's not actually that much to threaten it. Um, we do have, a, that, again, that Power Claw, the Xenos Power Claw, but by itself, that is not going to be enough to take on this um, this Commissar Lord. This is really, really bad for Indrid, and he needs to retreat out of there. Um, if he did not retreat out of there, I think he would have lost squads, multiple squads. As it is, it looks like uh, Yark might be the one losing squads, getting very, very close. And I think at this point, maybe Indrid, Indrid is just going to go into the base. And oh, and we have a Tyranna formation, some brutal play from Indrid right here. Um, but he, I think he needs to... Oh, he's going for the Commissar because he doesn't... That's the only thing that can actually threaten him. And, well, also this... Uh, this this uh, auto cannon heavy weapon team, but absolutely brutal. He looks like Yark actually got out of there just fine, but it's certainly Yark's been pinned in his base for a while now. And now we have a looted tank out for Fat E. I've noticed that he likes to get those looted tanks, uh, and it's not a terrible idea at all. First of all, it pressures press, pressures um, Adilla into switching to a Laz Cannon on his Havoc. And that does a lot to, by switching from the Heavy Bolter to the Laz Cannon, of course that means um, Fatty has to be more careful with his vehicle, but it means his War Boss gets a ton of free reign when he doesn't have to worry about getting suppressed. Now that Dreadnought does have the uh, Mark of Zinch, so that's gonna be, I, I still love that Mark of Zinch missile launcher. It is so good. It's not quite as good as it used to be because it has been nerfed a little bit, but I still think it's fantastic. It still hits infantry. Um, it still does a ton of AV damage, and I still just like that Frenzied Barrage ability for all the control it provides. Really, in my opinion, a great upgrade. But as great as I'm saying as it is, um, it's still just generally inferior to tanks just because of the mobility that tanks have as opposed to the lack of mobility that um, pretty much that... Um, that Dreadnoughts have. So a missed opportunity there from Adila not to wipe out that Slugger Boy, that Slugger Boy knob. He had his, he had his blood letters right there. I feel like he could have taken out that Slugger Boy knob right there. Now, I mean, this is tough because the Chaos Dreadnought does way more damage um, than this looted tank, and it has more health. But again, it has mobility. So if if the uh, looted tank decides that it's not going to win the fight, it can always back off, get repairs. Um, whereas this Dreadnought, if it's losing a fight and it needs to run away, it really can't get out um, because it, the tank will just chase it down. Um, except for the fact that Adila is playing as the Sorcerer, um, so he does, of, of course, have that Warp Global that he can use as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Some infiltration. Adila right now choosing actually not to get that choosing not to get that suppression um, that I get now on Fatty's side that gives his looted tank a little more free raid um, in fact now he's actually changing it he's choosing to get the Laz cannon the mark of corn instead of the auto cannon 
I mean, he's choosing to get the, uh, the autocannon instead of the last cannon. This could be rough, but um, Adila's follow-ups on the on the icon of Zinch, on the icon of Zinch aren't really that good. Um, so you can follow it up with just the sorcerer attacking with uh, an upgraded weapon. You can follow it up with dark flames, or you can follow it up with warp fire, or really just about anything. But Adila just hasn't really had enough to follow it up. Fat E, I think, overextending this tank and going to lose it right now, and he does lose it to that Dreadnought. I feel like Yark has really been held back, pushed back into his base. Um, Adila getting very close to losing that Dreadnought, and he's actually taking quite a bit of damage from all of these uh, Orc squads, and there we go with the rocks. But it looks like, it looks like Adila is mostly going to dodge the rocks. And he... Uh, he's even going to save his Dreadnought. And he also gets some, some Chaos Terminators out on the field. Here we go with some kind of teleport. Bloodletter teleport to teleport just to attack all those Shooter Boys. Get them off the cap. Uh, kind of a risky teleport in a way because those Bloodletters are at half health, but they didn't, they didn't jump into too much. Um, and they're... Most of the squads around them are squads that they will win against. Heretics need to turn around. No, just kidding. Wow, the Bloodletters finish off that Luda Boy squad all by themselves. Um, that's actually really bad for Fat E because he now has no AV whatsoever. So he actually has no answer to that Dreadnought. He's getting a new looted tank. Uh, the autocannon is in the building. It's actually shooting at the unit that should counter, and we see a guardsman fly out of the building right there. Pretty cool. Um, but the guardsman, or the, the heavy weapon team, was actually pretty much winning against that warrior brood right there. But now we got some uh, Slugger boys who might burn that house. Actually, they choose to back off, and I'm not even sure why. Um, but he, nevertheless, they do scare off that heavy weapon team and get it out there. Look at how much health this level 4 heavy weapon team has, and how did, did this, level heavy, this heavy weapon team get to level 4? Maybe just shooting at a lot of these uh, Tyranids. Oh, Indrid has quite an army now with double Thornback Carnifexes. And what do we have here? We have a Rocket Run. Um, the Rocket Run is really an awesome global, but I, I, unfortunately it didn't do a whole lot right there. Um, so the Rocket Run do really does have huge potential to wipe squads, um, especially weaker infantry squads like Termagants. Um, I think Yarik possibly could have done more there, but he kind of missed. Injured kind of reacted, and he was going after full health squads. Um, I actually think it's better to go for a bunch of partial health squads that are in retreat. If that victory point is lost. But especially if you, if you really catch someone blobbing, um, and if they, they're retreating a lot of partial health squads, you can, you can really wipe like three or four squads with a rocket run. So Adila's now in a bit of trouble. Now he's getting now Adila's getting doubled instead of Yark. And Adila just might lose his dreadnought this time, except for the fact that he gets it under worship. But we have a huge mass of vehicles right here. Yeah, I feel like the Terminators should shoot. Not that they're gonna like instantly kill a vehicle, but they need to like just do that almost as a way of being a deterrent. And wow, this is actually going to be really bad for this, uh... Oh, we actually have a Thornback Carnifex and a, and a Barb Strangler Carnifex. Didn't even realize that. But Adila now in a ton of trouble. And the base turret positioning on this map is so terrible that you can really walk up pretty close to the base. Before they even start firing, let alone suppressing. So it's still Adila getting doubled, unleashing some Doom Bolts on those Slugger Boys. And he still has another... Um, he still has another Curse of Zinch cast, but he hasn't been very successful with it. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to be as good on 
on a lot of these squads once they start leveling as much. Since you really need to... It's, it's very good on squads that will are very likely to quickly get a model kill, um, and especially when that, that first model kill is likely to result in uh, more model kills. So these Slugger Boys have leveled up quite a bit at level 4. In fact, we got a levels on a lot of things. Uh, all of Fat E's squads that are still alive are at level 4. We have level 4 and level 3 Heretics, level 3 Dreadnought, level 3 Bloodletters, uh, level 4 Guardsmen, level 4 Heavy Weapon Team, um, level 3 uh, Termagants, level 2 Warriors, and even one level 3 Karn Effects. So Fat E doing quite a bit better with his second looted tank, and now he's also throwing on a Commando Squad. And that Commando Squad gives uh, definitely gives him some nice versatility. Of course, you do get the ability to infiltrate, which has a lot of uh, just a lot of ambush potential as well as um, yeah, mainly ambush potential. I'm also back apps, uh, and then you also just get a lot of versatility out of the actual fighting capabilities of the commandos, um, as far as doing very good range DPS, um, more than a shooter boy squad, I believe, or if it's not more, then it's comparable. Uh, and Adila, unfortunately, I'm still not liking his Icon of Zinch play. Uh, those commandos, of course, with their knob, they can also do some soft AV. Wow, what did Indrid... Indrid finally lost Hormagons over here. It's unfortunately very disappointing that if I'm looking at one player, I'm going to miss um, someone else losing a bunch of their units or losing a ton of models. Oh, but Fat E may, may be going for a little too much there. He went for the Manticore since the Manticore has been a huge headache. Of course, we have a level 4 Manticore with over 400 health. Um, and he nearly loses the Commando Squad and just gets this Nom alive. Look at how funny he is running. And Adila even doing very, very well with this Chaos Dreadnought. Level 3, um, keeping it alive in Tier 3, but now he is getting overextended. Uh, unfortunately, Adila... <laughs> Still not really getting much out of his Icon of Zinch. Um, he's trying to combine it with Doom Bolts, which in a way is not that bad of an idea, um, just because Doom Bolts does a lot of damage. But Doom Bolts is actually very unlikely to get a model kill, which is what you need. So if you did Doom Bolts and combined it with something else, that would be extremely, extremely powerful. Dreadnought finally goes down, but Doom Bolts by itself is not going to com combine well enough with the, uh, with the Icon of Zinch. So we do have this Lehman Rust now out for um, for Yark. Does he have? That's I'm pretty sure that's the Vanquisher. It's hard to tell, but the Vanquisher is just a longer cannon than the default battle cannon, and it's quite a bit better against um, against vehicles. Of course, the regular battle cannon on the Lehman Rust can function as anti-vehicle, um, but that Vanquisher just does more damage, and it also has better range, uh, which is one of the great things about the Lehman Rust. Um, it has longer range when you have that Vanquisher, which I'm pretty sure... I would actually have to check the stats on this, but I'm pretty sure that actually means it outranges every other tank um, in the game, except for the Fire Prism, which I technically don't consider a tank. I consider it an artillery unit. Um, by comparison, I think the Executioner actually has shorter range. Ooh! Juicy Manticore Strike. Not really taking out, out any squads, but still getting model kills. Um, and we are going to get more tanks out on the field. Not a terrible idea, considering we have all these Carnifexes. Um, and then the tanks from the blue team would actually be superior to the looted tank. Um, and they would, they would be also be a good answer to the Carnifex. Uh, especially with the red team really lacking anti-vehicle snares. So a lot of good micro and a lot of good kiting from those blue team tanks um, could really do a lot to win the game for them and possibly even take out a lot of these uh, opposing vehicles, this looted tank, as well as all these Carnifexes, which right now need to go back to base to get some repairs. Uh, and of course, these Carnifexes, one is Thornback, one is Barb Strangler. That Barb Strangler Carnifex actually does do plasma cannon damage, so it can damage tanks, but more than likely, it's not going to be able to hit a tank. We have another Manticore Strike. Does not, does not wipe out that squad, but again, still a lot of bleed, um, a lot of mono kills, and that VP denial as well. 
Um, and the red team just has not been able to take out that that Manticore. So here we go with the Chaos Predator. Um, although Adila has not yet chosen to get any kind of um, a mark on his Chaos Predator. I think the mark of Zinch would be ideal, but what maybe a, what Adila is going for is that he's actually saving up so that he can put a second Predator out on the field, which is not a bad idea at all. Um, I definitely don't disagree with foregoing a mark for a little while so that you can put two Predators out on the field instead of just one, um, because the effect of two Predators is, is very, very powerful. Um, another thing to consider that Adila may or may not know is that both of the the blue team is getting a lot of support, I think, from this brood nest right now. Um, and even if they haven't been getting a lot of support from the brood nest, they can get a lot of support from the brood nest from the healing and the reinforcement that it provides. Um, one dark flames global will take out a brood nest, and since the brood nest is not, it's not a building technically. It's not like a human or building. The tyranids can't repair it; it just regenerates health on its own. Um, so if you just use Dark Flames on this Brood Nest, there's actually nothing that Injured would be, would be able to do to prevent it from going down. And I mean, of course, you're spending red to um, to destroy something that cost red, so... It's very reliable, but... it's You are spending red to counter just the fact that your opponent spent red, so it's... I wouldn't say it's overpowered, but... It's certainly extremely reliable. So, double cap now for the uh, red team. And if we look at the armies, um, Fat E has massive upkeep. And so does Adila. And so does Indrid. Yarick does not. Because he doesn't have massive units out on the field. Actually, he's getting a second tank. And we even have uh, double Terminators um, from Adila. More Manticore strikes going off. So, here's that first Lehman Russ. And the Commissar Lord just bossing around. And he does have the Emperor's Wrath, which is which is going to make things even harder. There's already a Manticore out on the field. And the Emperor's Wrath basically turns your Commissar into another Manticore. Um, although you can't use that if he's, if, he's, if he's dead on the floor. So here we go. And yes, we do see that um, we have one Lehman Rust with that Vanquisher, that longer cannon. And we have another Lehman Rust with that... Actually, wow, just kidding. I can't, I can't correctly identify my cannons. We have... Two Vanquisher Lehman Russes, yeah, definitely. Which I think is the right choice. Um, they're they're just big, massive vehicles out from both the red team players, and they haven't been able to take them out yet. Meanwhile, double cast Terminators. Uh, one has the auto cannon, and in fact, both has the auto can both have the auto cannon. And we really need this cast predator to be careful. It's gonna it, I, it should go drive back so it can continue to go back into worship um, really go back even more it is being detected though apparently and it is going to go down I think from that rocks oh no it goes right into the center from all the pathing issues this is going to be absolutely terrible for Adila this is really going to be a bad day for him and I think this could be this could potentially be a really big turning point um, so Adila lost a heretic squad probably a level 4 heretic squad he's got another one that's taking a lot of losses we've got chaos terminators down to one out of three models um, and another one that needs, that needs basically health, needs healing. Uh, and Adila is bleeding a ton. This is really, really bad for the blue team. Uh, Yarik himself is also suffering quite a bit. Apparently lost a Garden squad right here, trying to go for a cap. We have now have three Carnifexes and another Rocket Run. And I think that Rocket Run, oh, it misses the Termagants. So it wasn't going to take out those Termagants, and these Termagants doesn't get them as well. Unfortunately, that rocket run did not do a whole lot. Commissar Lord back on the field, but things are looking definitely looking up for the red team. Um, with Indrid now with triple Carnifexes, uh, one currently has no upgrade whatsoever. Might be worth it for him to get a Venom Cannon, uh, just to give something to answer back against all these uh, Lehman Russes. I'm actually surprised the Lehman Russes have not been doing more, but this this Carnifex could be in a lot of trouble. Um, I think if just if Yarik chases just a little bit, but he actually decides not to chase uh, that Carnifex, I think he could have taken it out there. And I mean, even though these these um, 
these Vanquisher Lehman Russes, although they definitely are they are AV. I would even say they're hard AV because again they it's um, anti-vehicle damage on something that is itself a vehicle and very mobile and long range. Um, but it's not quite high DPS. If we look at the Vanquisher, it, it says only 28.85 uh, explosive DPS. If you think about it, that's actually half the DPS of a Laz Cannon Predator. Half. It's also less DPS um, than a than even an Auto Cannon Predator. A default Predator does more anti-vehicle damage than these than this um, than the Vanquisher Lehman Russ. Um, now, I mean, generally speaking, most people who play the game consider the Lehman Russ the best tank. Um, it does, of course, have that 35% damage resistance. And it also has, um, with that elite tank crew, you do, do get that 800 health as well as an increased sight radius. Um, and it does win against a Laz Cannon Predator, I think, because of that 35% damage resistance. Um, and even if it's not... It might be premature to say it's the best tank in the game, but it's certainly a very, very good tank. Very, very good tank. Um, but uh, Yarrick needs to micro the tank, or he's going to lose this one, and he does lose it. Oh, man. Really, really disappointing to see that just go down to basically drop to micro. Um, and he's even in a lot of trouble right now having to drive past this Carnifex, and he's going to lose this Lehman Russ as well. Bad, bad day for Yarrick. Um, I don't really see the blue team coming back from this. It's... And this brood nest, unfortunately, is still up. Um, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same one. And a single dark flames would just take this out uh, instantly. Oh, we have uh, Terminator models just going down to that war boss. Terminator models teleport out of there, but that of course means they do not get the cap at a time when they really need the cap. Um, blue team low on BPs, low on armies. Adila getting new heretics. Um, doesn't have power. And, I mean, this is just... I think this is just kind of Adila's final stand. And he actually takes out the... Takes out the looted tank. I think Fat E maybe just kind of pressing his... Pushing his luck there. Just staying up there when... Um, he, I mean, he certainly had the advantage, but... You can't just leave uh, a looted tank right there in against uh, all these autocannon Terminators. I mean, th this Terminator squad nearly dead. Um, going for that looted tank so it can kill it. But then these loot these Slugaboy squads are... The Slugaboy is just chasing after it because it's going to kill that Terminator. And they're going to kill these these Bloodletters as well because they just activated user choppers. The Bloodletters are not responding. They do phase out into the warp. Um, but they are ultimately going to need to get out of there. Another Terminator squad goes down. Um, one to one cap for, or just one to one cap. Uh, Ten for the blue team. One hundred fifteen for the red team. But again, I still don't see how the red team or the blue team is going to come back from this. And it looks like it's actually going to be the double cap right here in favor of the red team, which should seal the deal for them. And Fat E just going forward. I mean, he did take out... He did take out... Uh, pretty much did take out the AV. Um, these Bloodletters are still doing some soft AV, but that's really not enough. And we have a GG called by Yark. VP's taken down, and that is the game. Quite a game. Now, this was a user submission, and it was actually submitted by Yark. So we have someone here who actually submitted a game of himself where he did not win, so... Wouldn't have spoiled it uh, earlier on if I said, oh, Yarix submitted this replay. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.